The Mystery of the Anunnaki Gods, Satan, the Angel of Darkness, and the Hidden Truth. In ancient times, when legend and mythology shaped people's view of the cosmos, an enigma persisted in a realm where truth and fiction intertwine with amazing subtlety. In this landscape of mysteries, the Anunnaki gods, Enki, Enlil, and Anu, along with mysterious beings like Satan and Lucifer, unfold their cosmic saga of wisdom, betrayal, and the eternal quest for knowledge. Satan, the Angel of Darkness If Lucifer is the Angel of Light, Satan is the Angel of Darkness. This introduction catapults us into a universe where the line between good and evil is not only nuanced, but often reversed, challenging us to reevaluate everything we thought we knew. But what was Satan's kingdom? What made him different from Lucifer? And how do these entities relate to man? Let's explore this narrative together, where myth meets history and science meets esoteric knowledge. According to sacred texts, both Satan and Lucifer are portrayed as entities with superhuman intelligence. In contrast, in the biblical scriptures, man is described as an ignorant being, unable to distinguish between good and evil, a creature lacking judgment and intelligence. Thus, the God Jehovah seems to have wanted man to remain in a state of ignorance, denying him access to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This story, wrapped in mystery, leads us back to the Garden of Eden, where we meet such main characters as God, Lucifer, the serpent, the heavenly hosts, and man. In this narrative, Lucifer and Satan play central roles, being the angels most valued by God. However, in an unexpected twist, Satan, seen as lacking conscience, chooses to side with man, offering a completely different perspective on the traditional story of temptation in the Garden of Eden. The mystery and controversy deepen when we discuss the serpent and his dialogue with Eve, a conversation that changed the course of human history. Contrary to church interpretation, this dialogue is not a simple temptation, but rather a revelation of the truth hidden by God. This truth, revealed by the serpent, allowed mankind to gain knowledge, thus transforming them into godlike beings. Exploring further, we find that the deities were not horrified by humanity's knowledge, but by its limitless potential. This fear led to the exile of man from Eden and the strict protection of the tree of life. This story invites us to reevaluate the relationship between man and divinity, between knowledge and ignorance, between light and darkness. Ultimately, this mystery delves into Sumerian mythology, where Anu and his sons, Enlil and Enki, dominate as supreme gods. In this saga, Enki, the serpent, and Enlil, Lucifer, are presented as distinct entities with different domains and destinies, unfolding in an epic that crosses time and space to celestial battles and the drama of humanity. This realm of myth and reality, where Satan and Lucifer play their divine games, is a space where questions about our essence and the universe resonate. Mystery, enigma, and the eternal search for truth are the guiding thread of this introduction, inviting us to explore the unknown depths of existence and redefine our understanding of the world around us. If Lucifer is the angel of light, Satan is the angel of darkness. We will immediately see what his kingdom was, what he did, what was the difference between him and Lucifer, but also between them and man. From the point of view of science and knowledge, Satan and Lucifer are depicted as being much more intelligent than man. In biblical writing, man is an ignorant being, a slave who is unable to distinguish between good and evil. A creature without judgment, without intelligence, to whom the good God denies access to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, the God Jehovah never wanted man to open his eyes and know the truth about his true condition. About the two angels of darkness, everyone believes that they are one and the same creature, but I will prove to you that it is not so, following exactly the biblical description. As I told you in a previous chapter, they have many names, which derive mainly from the evil they do. The only one who actually has all these names of reproach is Satan. That is why he was always painted as the Lord of Darkness, of the Underworld, which is Hell. In this world of darkness, eternal fire does not exist, as the populace will. The world of darkness is a world without light, without a sun to illuminate it. If Lucifer is the one who dominates, demonizes, and oppresses man, let's see what the serpent did for ignorant man. 
we will have to return to the garden of heaven because from there all the evils that have been put on the burden of man started as we have already seen in heaven lived god lucifer the serpent the heavenly hosts and man of all the angels the most important and most appreciated were lucifer and satan they were the spotless cherubs with whom god was proud heaven was the place where many threads were woven against the slave man god had no interest in his own creature being intelligent it was enough to understand only what he was commanded to do and to be docile in behavior for this reason he was convinced that the two human beings would respect the order he gave them it never occurred to him that satan who seemed to be one without conscience like all his own would go over to the side of man one of the days, when the Lord was away to make various business visits through the kingdom of heaven, the serpent went to talk to Eve about the command that God had given them. He knew that Adam was not very intelligent, that's why he preferred to discuss with his woman. The serpent knew the command that had been given to them, but he was interested in the explanation that God gave to the people regarding this prohibition. Because the serpent preferred the woman instead of Adam. It was attributed the greatest sin in human history. The discussion he had with the serpent became a plague for all mankind. I know that you all know this story, but only from the point of view of the interpretation made by the popes. To prove that they are not right, I will turn to the biblical verses. Genesis 3 to 1, but the serpent was the most cunning of all the beasts on earth, which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman, did God say that you should not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the snake, we can eat fruit from the trees of heaven, only from the fruit of the tree in the middle of heaven God told us, do not eat from it, nor touch it, so that you do not die. From these few lines, the peoples made the biggest sin of humanity, although Eve's discussion with the snake is not a hypocritical discussion in which the snake tries to tempt her. On the contrary, it seems that Satan was deeply indignant at the dishonest way in which God behaves with his own creatures. Because of this, he cannot remain silent and reveals a cruel truth to man. Genesis 4-5 Then the serpent said to the woman, No, you will not die. But God knows that on the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Listening to the words of the snake, Eva goes to study those forbidden fruits and realizes that they are worthy of desire because they gave science. She is also the first to realize that the serpent was not lying. After eating them, he did not die, as the lion creator had told them, but his eyes were opened. He saw the truth. Then she decides to feed her husband as well. Genesis 6-7 Therefore the woman, considering that the fruit of the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eyes and worthy of desire, because it gives knowledge, took from it and ate and gave to her husband and he also ate. Then their eyes were opened to both of them, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves coverings. The serpent opens their eyes, and then they see the garden of heaven and the apples in it differently than they had been presented. When they eat from the tree of knowledge they do not die, but become conscious, they become like God, as Satan tells them. But God knows that in the day you eat from it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The serpent's honesty towards man is confirmed by God himself who says, Genesis 3-22, Behold, Adam became one of us, knowing good and evil. You see, God never wanted man to see and know the truth about his condition. That's why he denied him from the beginning the knowledge that would have made him equal with him and his host of heavenly baboons. In order not to notice this hatred he had for man, a phrase was introduced to direct the reader's attention to something else. It is about the paragraph in which the man realizes that it is empty. To convince that man's nakedness is carnal, it is said, and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves coverings. In addition to the fact that it is not known how they managed to hold the needle in the hands of the fools that they were, you do not understand where they got those utensils and who taught them to use them. That is why you realize that it does not refer to their physical emptiness, but to their science. When they eat the fruits, they become like gods, like God. Man becomes one of them. He had become just like any of those otherworldly beings since those times. Then why is his ignorance perpetuated? The divinities were not frightened by man's science, but by his boundless power. That's why they decide to remove him from them. 
To be sure that people will not approach that place, they strengthened the guard extremely much. The ghost hordes were desperate and terrified of human power. Genesis 3 to 24, and driving out Adam, he placed him around the Garden of Eden and placed cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Now you understand why someone like me decided to reveal to you what they didn't let you see, even though you have these things written under your nose? I have studied the Bible and the writings from where it was copied so much that I can no longer be fooled. Man was from that ancient moment, not as one of them, but one infinitely stronger than them. This is the reason why he must sit with his head down and believe without investigating what he is told. God forbids them to eat from the fruit of the tree, not because he wanted them to be good, but because he wanted them to be ignorant, stupid, just as he made all his followers to be today. Ingesting the forbidden fruit did not bring them death, as he lied to them that it would happen, but it brought them self-knowledge, which the hypocritical God did not want for his creatures. The snake, so cursed by the indoctrinated man, was the only one who told the man the truth, and for this he was defamed, ridiculed, and hated in eternity by the very man whose good he wanted. The serpent or Satan knew that man is kept in slavery and ignorance by the demented lure, that's why he wanted to warn him and tell him the truth. This is why the opponent is called. The truth did not stand and does not stand on the side of Jehovah, but on the side of the serpent. He tells man that science was hidden from him and that death does not exist for him, because you will not die, but on the day you eat from it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This is why God only needs sleeping sheep, not people. If they wake up, they realize that they are much stronger than their masters and that they have been tricked. For this defiance he made to the Lord, the serpent, Satan, or Enki, he was cruelly punished by him and imprisoned in the bowels of the earth. He was bound with thousands of padlocks, guarded by unearthly guards, and cursed to be humiliated and mocked by the man he helped to free himself from the yoke of the unjust God. He is Leviathan, the ancient serpent who defied his master, standing up for the truth. The enmity between the man and the snake is created by this sly God himself, who through a lie puts enmity not only between the serpent and Eve, but between their descendants, between their two seeds. Genesis 14 to 15, the Lord God said to serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals and among all the beasts of the field. On your belly shall you crawl, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. It will crush your head, and you will prick its heel. In the Sumerian myth that inspired the biblical scholars, the great masters of heaven and earth were Anu and the sons of Enlil and Enki. They were half-brothers because they had been born to Anu by different women. In those times, the concept of marriage and wife did not exist. The wife was the one who had the same rank as her husband. Anu's wife, who was the absolute queen just like him, could not give him sons. That is why he seeks to have descendants worthy of his throne, with high-ranking women. Enki's mother was one of them. From her, Anu has his first son, Enki, or the serpent. He was to become the absolute master upon his father's death. Meanwhile, the queen gives him Enlil or Lucifer. For this reason, this one, although smaller than his brother, had to become the legal heir to the throne. As Enki's mother was of noble rank, her son was also entitled to part of the inheritance. Because of this, Enlil becomes the master of the sky, and Enki of the earth. When the pagans wrote the Bible, they changed the names of the two to Lucifer and Satan, but they made the two into a single entity, which lives in hell. In scripture, this cold world is described as a prison for fallen angels. These angels are the ones who sinned against nature with the women of men. The only angels who were truly condemned to darkness were those who destroyed creation by their intercourse with the women of men and Enki, also called the serpent. The punishment he was sentenced to was not given to him because of the genetic experiment, but because he betrayed the supreme master. He revealed knowledge to man, a slave created by him. Later, when another creation took place, it was Prometheus who killed the man to whom he gave the sacred fire stolen from the gods. The prison in which the angels who joined man were imprisoned was called Tartar, a word that does not appear even once in the Orthodox Bible. The different names given to some places of condemnation were translated by the Orthodox Church to the Mass, giving them the generic name of Hell or Hell. 
It is the only cult that has not translated the correct name of the underground places, although it uses the same Bible as the others. Tartarus is not a place with eternal flames and devils with pitchforks in hand, but it is a prison, a deep place where the light does not reach. All those who defied the master, but helped creation, are condemned there. One of the main condemned is Saint Nanki, the serpent, the genetic engineer, the most intelligent and brilliant architect of antiquity, the connoisseur of matter and the father of the first material bodies. Also in the myth it is said that Enki was in love with the bodies he created, that's why he always helped man and protected him from the destructive decisions of the gods. I would like you not to confuse the snake with the reptilians. In the Bible, the power of the serpent, which is transformed into a pitiful object with inexplicable powers for a metal, could not fail to appear. Numbers 24 to 9, and the people spoke against God and against Moses, saying, Why did you bring us out of the land of Egypt to kill us in the desert? Because here there is neither bread nor water, and our soul has become hungry this poor food. Then the Lord sent poisonous snakes on the people, which bit the people, and many people from the children of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, We made a mistake, protesting against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord, so that the snakes depart from us. And Moses prayed to God for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make yourself a copper snake and put it on a pole, and if the serpent bites a man, everyone who is bitten who looks at him will live. And Moses made a copper snake and put it on a pole, and when a snake bit a man, he looked at the copper snake and lived. Truths are always coded so that they are not easily discovered. In these verses, there is another fundamental element that is hard to notice. After Moses makes the bronze snake, he puts it, at the command of the Lord, in a wooden pillar. This pillar represents the sacred tree of knowledge that the serpent spirit was supposed to guard. He came down from that tree and told Eve the truth about its fruits. Jesus the soul was also crucified on a wooden pole, who, like the serpent, was the legitimate master of the sacred tree. Followers of the cult of the biblical God, such as the well-known King Hezekiah, destroyed any object that represented the snake and the sacred pillar. In the book of Kings, Hezekiah is described as tearing down from the temple the sacred pillar and the idolatrous objects, such as the Nohestan snake. Do you now understand why I keep saying that the church and its religions have turned all the truth into a lie? The sacred pillar is the symbol of the tree of life that the ancients knew about and could not forget. The memories of these ancient events were called pagan customs by the church so that they could remove the ancient truth from the lie they created. The same pagan customs were then rechristened also by the church with the name of traditions. In reality, church traditions are pagan customs that commemorate real facts of antiquity. When a man dies, his pillars are sung, and when he gets married, his tree is raised. These pagan customs praise the tree of knowledge and the tree of life that non-earthlings deny to man for fear of his immeasurable powers. They give eternal life to material man. John 14-15 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I would like to emphasize once again that the ancient serpent, where the name Satan comes from, has absolutely nothing to do with the reptilians, the reptiles, or the vipers that Jesus is talking about. Even the appellative Satan, with which Jesus called Peter, is not related to the ancient event. These gods came much later and are not part of the beginning Genesis. Matthew 13 to 33, woe to you hypocritical scribes and Pharisees. Snakes, vipers, how will you escape the damnation of Gehenna? Matthew 22 to 23, and Peter, taking him aside, began to rebuke him, saying to him, have mercy on you that this should not happen to you. And he, turning, said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a fool to me, because you do not think the things of God, but the things of men. Satan, like Lucifer, was also a bright, intelligent, and appreciated angel at the Lord's court, until he betrayed him by revealing to man his slave status. The difference between Satan and Lucifer is that Lucifer betrayed man and went to Cardassia with Jehovah to destroy him. Satan unmasked God in front of man, that's why he was punished with the dark prison. The man hates Serp instead of respecting him because he had the courage to tell him the truth about the evil plans directed against him. 
The soul hated snake lives in the kingdom of darkness where the fallen angels spend their days. Jesus soul himself had to preach to these disenfranchised beings, as the Bible tells us, for if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but bound them with the bonds of darkness and hell, gave them to be kept for judgment, Jude 1 to 6. And the angels who did not keep their dignity, but left their abode, he put in custody under darkness and eternal chains for the judgment of the great day. Because Christ also once suffered death for our sins, he the just for the unjust, to bring us to God, being put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit, with which he came down and preached to the spirits held in prison, which had been disobedient once upon a time, when the long suffering of God was waiting in the days of Noah, and the ark was being prepared in which few souls, that is, eight, were saved by water. So, in Tartar are imprisoned all the opponents of the Lord, all those who did not agree with his acts of insanity, lies, and tyranny. On their heads, God put in human curses, as he did with man. He handled everything in such a way as to put anger and hatred between those who were supporters of the same cause, as he did with Eve and the serpent. Tartarus, which has been wrongly translated as hell, is not a place of eternal fire, but a place of waiting, a prison where the spirits of men do not dwell after their bodies have died. Not. Tartarus is the place of the entities that rebelled against the God of the Jews from all powers. Lucifer is the angel of light, and Satan is the angel of darkness. The first is rewarded and becomes the God of this world that worships him without really knowing what he is doing. The second becomes the enemy of man, whom he wanted to wake up from the ignorance in which God kept him. For this reason, he becomes the most feared enemy of Jehovah, who condemns him to live in the universe without light. 